we have got Janet. around and he makes a point to hand two to me and my husband that represent penguins and stuff. <laughs> my season with penguins because he knew that on July 25th Scars Publications just released two photo books of mine. One is Antarctica Wildlife that of course has tons of penguins all over it and the other one's Antarctica Earth's Final Frontier that shows amazing shots of icebergs and underwater and it's amazing stuff that you'll never see ever again. It was just really Double plus cool. But I want to share one poem from Antarctica Wildlife for you and then go on to another two poems and I'll try to make it as quick as possible because we've got a lot of time to be able to get through quickly. This first one I'd like to share with you is called On the Bridge. The captain invited us onto the bridge and we cautiously walked and watched the majestic view from the front of the ship searching for what was yet to be found. But lucky for us, crewmates sought the first humpback whales of the season. So the captain gently slowed the ship down just to try to glide alongside. And maybe the whale was as curious as we, because after a few minutes of gliding, three humpback whales came along beside trying to see what we might be hiding. Our intentions were pure, but maybe they knew that we would never be truly alike. So they blew with their blowholes, curled with their fins, and with their tails, they turned the other way. Yes, it's true, we're not alike. They turned backwards while we moved ahead. But I think we both learned from each other, and we grew through our final goodbye. I was honored to be on the bridge that day. I was honored he gave us that chance to communicate with something so different from us that helps, in a way, make us the same. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> um, this is one of the anniversary issues of CCMD Magazine, magazine that I've run since 93. And uh, this was from 2012. And it's called Sea Drift, the book. And this is a short poem I've never shared here. And it's called Human Construct of Time. Is this the best of times? Is this the worst of times? Or is this just one of those times. <laughs> Only humans understand time. Where did all the time go, we say, as time slips away, as we search for ways to not look old, to avoid death. If I ever saw God, I'd have to ask, how old are you? How much longer are you guys going to sit there, observe? But, Time is a human experience, a human construct. I have to keep reminding myself as I sit and think at times like these. Thank you. Thank you. Quick for you. This one I'm going to share because Ron Kewen, a musician, took this poem of mine and made a song out of it and changed it around. This is from an issue of CCT called Being Real from July, August 2016. It's called Shared Air. I've heard the buzz before that we could be breathing the same molecules breathed by Julius Caesar's last gasp. Because he was breathing oxygen and molecules are constantly rearranged and recycled, it could happen. But wait a minute, why not just stop at Julius? Why not Cleopatra? Why not Caligula? Why not Attila the Hun or Adolf? And hey, we have to stop there. Why stop there even? Because we've shared the air with the dinosaurs from T-Rex to pterodactyls. But someone out there might be even saying that, hoping that a single molecule that they breathed was also in Jesus's lungs. Really. 
some people actually think this. And, and some people just don't want to accept the idea that we might be sharing the air with homeless people that we avoid on the street. So, so fine. Like, let's figure this out and, and figure it out with math because math, we can always figure out and make things right and make everything crystal clear. So, some scientists started to sort it out complete, and coming up with the numbers. Oxygen molecules in the atmosphere, 67 plus 48 zeros. Oh, wow, that's a lot. And so, to make some of this uh, calculations, we can figure this out. Over the course of an 80-year lifetime, and you know, Adolf Hitler or even Caligula didn't live that long, they would get, be eating, you know, breathing over an 80-year lifespan. A human would only breathe 0. 0.000 and six more zeros, zero, one percent. And of all the oxygen atoms on Earth, because if you think of this, really, with numbers that small, there's no way that you can actually make a match. Because with how many oxygen atoms there are, you would actually be, statistically speaking, unable to get that much. It's being like a pathetic way to try to be able to say that you've shared the air of somebody who was famous once somewhere. I remember meeting a few famous people before, and each of them tried to say something funny, and trust me, it really fell short. So I made a point to get away. Because it's true, just because they're known doesn't mean you should know them. I, mean, I don't want to find six degrees of separation between me and Kevin Bacon, and I don't want to know if I've shared air with Aristotle, because believe me, it might not be the smartest idea to spend your time fantasizing about li your links by shared air to others. Just be busy being someone yourself, so that others will be taking their time trying to link up with you. Thank you. Give it up for Janet.